How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well. Look, I need to say, I know I'm a few days late to the party, but happy birthday. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you're only 26. You make me feel like such a loser. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the new single, Homecoming Queen, it's already been so well received by both the public and country radio. It was a co-write with Jimmy Robbins and Nicole Gallion. What can you tell me about the writing and recording of this gorgeous song? For this record, I've done a lot of writing on tour because I've been touring so much. Mm -hmm. So some writers were nice enough to come out on the tour bus with me for a full weekend. And back in February, Nicole and Jimmy just came out for the weekend. I was on tour with Kelly Clarkson and we had this magic energy that weekend. We wrote a ton of songs, a couple of which are actually on on the album from that same weekend. But Homecoming Queen, it came from the fact that truthfully, I really was in a super insecure season of my life. And Nicole kind of just casually asked how I was. And for some reason, I felt very safe in that moment with two of my friends that also happened to be like creative collaborators, 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 whoa, (laughs) weird jet lag. Um, I just kind of opened up and I was like, you know what? I think that I'm probably tired and I think I'm insecure. And, and she was like, well, you would have never known that because you're not showing anyone that because, you know, if you would have looked at my social media or how the show was that night, it would have looked like I was, you know, the happiest person alive. And I think we wrote this song all about just like, you know, giving ourselves permission to to have a bad day and to, and to be insecure because we're all human and that's a human reaction and emotion that we all go through. That makes so much sense then when I'm thinking about the video directed by Shane Drake. It just takes the depth of the song to another emotional level. But yeah. what you were just describing there, that really explains the reason behind the concept of going from glam to exposing yourself completely raw. You're even crying by the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> They're real tears. Everyone's like, how did you get yourself to cry? I'm like, listen, y'all, I'm not an actress. I'm a singer. Um, Shane's incredible. I've worked with him on Miss Me More as well. And he knows exactly what to say to get me in the in the emotional headspace that I need to be in. And he, he really got me there at the end. So I'm really proud of it. And honestly, like homecoming queen is just the metaphor. I was never the actual homecoming queen in high school. It's the metaphor we just decided to go with. I absolutely loved your first album, but there was um, a significant maturity in the songwriting and the production between For the First Time and Unapologetically. I know you've had a chance for this new album to co-write with some of your own favourite artists, people like Ed Sheeran and Ryan Tedder and Julia Michaels. I've heard reports that there's quite a few sort of sadder songs on this album. I think there's just a lot more of a lot. And what I mean by that is like, you know, Homecoming Queen is a lot more vulnerable than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. But there's also a song with horns and there's also a song with a string quartet and there's two collaborations and there's just a lot more of a lot so I wouldn't say it's sadder I would say it's just probably a little more self-aware you're teaching me how one sort of comment gets taken completely out of context doesn't it (laughs) (laughs) you mentioned earlier there that obviously I mean 2019 has been another incredible year for you and you mentioned it kicked off in January you were opening for Kelly Clarkson in April you embarked on your own hugely successful headlining arena tour which I do know and you've said this to me in the past has been a dream of yours to achieve since you were a little girl yeah because you're such a fan of the bells and whistles and all that aren't you I've always loved production because I grew up you know seeing Taylor and Shania with all the pyro and the hydraulic lifts and all that stuff so that's always been my dream and this was the first time that we really got to go for it (laughs) um I mean it was a 14 date tour because we were like can we pull this off can we get this many people in a room um to see it work like it did I opened for Keith and then Kelly back to back and opening is so much fun because you learn so much from your favorite artists that that you're warming up for but you forget that songs that weren't singles still mattered you know and during the headlining tour we played album cuts and people sang all of it and I think it was so encouraging to do that right before I went to go work on the next album because I was like okay these songs that you know aren't going to be on the radio are still going to matter to somebody. That's the thing. When I think I'm going to listen to some Kelsey Ballerini, I'm going to secondhand smoke. Oh. And also in April, another dream accomplished. You were inducted into the Grand Ole Opry by Carrie Underwood, who you performed with on the night. Yeah, that's insane. I made my Opry debut four and a half years ago. So to be able to be inducted as the youngest member (laughs) this soon into my career is insane. I... 
I mean, it's the highest honor as a country music artist to join that family. So I just want to make them proud. Yeah. I mean, I was actually over in Nashville in June for CMA Fest. You obviously not only performed at Nissan Stadium, but you co-hosted the show with Thomas Rhett and Bobby Bones. When you were talking earlier there about maybe being in the background at times a bit insecure, when I saw you up on that stage in front of like 60,000 people, you're just this like untouchable absolute superstar. That must be the ultimate adrenaline rush. You know, you fake it till you make it. <laughs> I never walk on stage thinking I'm an absolute superstar, but I'm glad that I'm I'm pulling it off. Do you have almost like a Sasha Fierce alter ego? You know, I research interviews from a ton of people just to kind of, that's the way I learn is by how other people do it. And I remember seeing two interviews, one Beyonce and one Carrie. And Beyonce said, you know, when I walk on stage... I'm Sasha Fierce. That's who I am. That's who I embody. And when I walk off stage, I'm just Beyonce Knowles. And then I saw Carrie say the same thing. She goes like, when I walk on stage, I am Carrie Underwood. And when I get off the stage, I'm just Carrie. I was like, man, that must be confusing for them. Is there some kind of disconnect? Are they changing their personality? And now that I'm like five years into this, I'm like, I get it. Because everything you do is so much more dramatic and overstated and all of that stuff. Essentially, you're talking to thousands of people. You would never do that off stage. So yeah, I would say that I've started to really understand that. And during your CMA Fest set, you performed this feeling with the Chainsmokers. That's obviously crossed over into the pop world and become a massive hit and grown your fan base quite significantly outside of the country world. How did this collaboration come about? I've been such a fan of them for years and I, I covered Closer. I did an acoustic version of that on tour a couple of years ago and and honestly, in every interview, when they were like, who do you want to collaborate with on every red carpet? I would just say the chain smokers over and over again. So I think I just willed it into happening. <laughs> um, but we became friends. We we had been friends for a couple of years. And then the song came along and I just loved it. And so it's been so much fun. And we've gotten to do so many cool things together for the song. And yeah, it was my first real collaboration. So I thought it was such a good experience with it. Cam was in Belfast a couple of weeks ago performing and she spoke about, you know, the issue in America with country radio being so male dominated. As one of the very few females who do get embraced by country radio, what are your thoughts on this? (sighs) It's hard for me to say because me and country radio have had like a really good track record together. I've worked really hard for them and they've done really amazing things for me. But that's talking in a very selfish sense. Uh, I think bigger picture I wouldn't know what it looks like to be a female in country music if I didn't have Carrie and Miranda and Taylor and before that, Trisha and Faith and Shania. And it goes on and on, you know, and I think there is a responsibility that country radio and country music has to the young girls and guys that are getting their guitars at 13 years old right now that are listening to country radio, you know, and the guys are covered. The guys who are playing guitar with a soulful voice have Chris Stapleton. The guys that are playing guitar that are from out of the country have Keith Urban. The guys from a small town and, you know, want to write songs about traditional country music, they have Luke Combs. Like, there's a guy for everyone. There's not a girl for everyone. And I think that's our responsibility to fix that. That's very, very interesting because you're playing to like 10,000 little girls a night and most of them are probably now growing up wanting to be you. That's scary. (laughs) <laughs> I can't believe you've never thought of that before. <laughs> I don't think I don't think about it like that. No, I just I, I always go on stage and I look out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could be friends or like sisters with all these people, you know? Yeah. And your husband Morgan, he recently kicked off his world tour in Dublin. He did. You've performed in the city at the Three Arena a couple of times with Lady A and as part of Country to Country. Please tell me, yes, are we going to see you anytime soon in either Dublin or Belfast? I really want to. I don't have any plans right now. I mean, we're still putting together my entire next year because once we put out the album, I'll obviously tour it. So um, I'd love to. It's on my radar. Super. And finally, obviously, just congratulations on your CMA Female Vocalist of the Year nomination. Thanks. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Kelsey, listen, it's always a pleasure. Continued success. And uh, I can't wait to listen to the new album. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to finish it. (laughs) (laughs) Take care. Thank you. You too. See See ya. ya.